couple words of comment, context. Uh, my uh, understanding of Mark's audience is that they were uh, addressed as Jews in the more or less immediate aftermath of the Jewish war. And so that uh, greatest disaster in the history of the nation is, for Marx listeners, a very present reality. Uh, the, uh, it is quite likely that there were uh, what the historical congruence between the character of the audiences and their identity and the way in which they are addressed, we don't know. But uh, that's one of the things to talk about. Uh, the, there is, I think, a congruence. That is, we don't have to just play first century, post-war, whatever. We live in a nation that has been in perpetual war, more or less, for all of our lives uh, and uh, for the second half of the 20th century, uh, more than that. And the, uh, the issue of whether uh, we believe in violence or nonviolence is a lively issue in the United States and in the world. Uh, so this story has congruence with our context as well as theirs. And I'd invite you to hear it in both contexts. Um, the, uh, the invitation of the story is to hear it uh, addressed to each of us. So I invite you to that. So let me tell you a little bit of the story first in Greek, so that you, uh, given that this is also a, a scholarly exercise, uh, a performance of Mark in a context that is utterly distinctive in the world, uh, it could only happen here in significant ways. And so the dynamics of this are inevitably different here. That's part of its adventure. So uh, I'm, uh, because most of us learned it this way, I will use the Rasmian pronunciation, which I'm sure is not the way that it was pronounced, but, uh, so, uh, but we're all involved in reconstructions. So. Ainda ta pasca kai ta adzma meta dua himeras. Kai zetun hoi arkeres kai hoi grammates posaton in dalo kratesantes apoktenosin. Elegant gar. Me ante herorte. Me puta estai. Darupas tu de tu. Kai antas. And betania. And te oikia simonas tu lepru. Karke menu, ilthen gune, ekusa alabastro, muru, nardu, pistakes, palutelus. Sun tripsa satin alabastro. Kateka en tu tes kefales. A sandet aganacuntes prosautus. A sti hea polia haute tu muru yegan. A duna tagar tu tota muron prothenae epano denarion trio cosium, kai dothenae, tois torquois, kai enabrimonto aute. O de Jesus ape, afata aute. Tiaute corpus paregente. Kalon ergon ergasata in a moi. Panta de gar tus tokus ekate metautum. Kai hotan thalita 
Du nå stø av toi se u på i seg. Er med? Det er u på en toi stø. Vesken i på i seg. Da vel av en marissa i ta som han nå. Hvis han en taf i oss må han. Amen. Jeg legger hun inn. Hapu er an kerup te tu an gelion es halon ton kosman. Hapu er an dunastan. Hvala i teisa tai es ne masinan. Al teis. Kai judas skai. Ha his ton dodeke. Apelthen pros tus archiares hina alton paradoi altois. Oi de acusantes e carison kai epengelonta argurian dunai. Cadzete pos alton el caros paradoi. word before we hear the passion narrative in English uh, about the context of this story. Uh, this uh, is obviously the ending of Mark's story. There have been two hours of stories before this. Uh, and, uh, and I'm not going to try to summarize those stories, but I would just call them to your memory. Just kind of remember you know, the, the sweep of uh, Mark's story. About, uh, about Jesus, uh, the, the various actions that he did, uh, first in, uh, in Galilee, then on the other side of the sea, in various contexts where it's clearly Gentiles who he's feeding, healing, uh, the, the ongoing mystery of his identity, and who it is, and the disciples seeking to understand that. Uh, often uh, in a significantly confused manner uh, with which we are all inv invited, I think, to identify. So. And the last uh, part of the story that precedes this is the most intimate conversation between Jesus and uh, his closest friends, uh, Peter, James, John and Andrew, uh, and in which we as the audience are addressed as, as his closest friends. And it's the longest talk uh, in the whole of the preceding story and is the time of greatest intimacy between Jesus and as a character in speaking to you as a representative of Jesus and telling his story uh, so that that is what immediately precedes this. And the last words uh, are clearly addressed to audiences who have heard a story of at least two hours. Please, stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> well, the feast of Passover and unleavened bread was the next day. And our chief priests and scribes were seeking how they might arrest him by a conspiracy and kill him on that day. Because they had been saying, not during the feast, or there'll be a riot of the people. On that day, Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of Simon. The leper. And as he was reclining, a woman came with an alabaster jar of precious ointment from India. Pure nard. Very expensive. And breaking the neck of the jar, she poured it 
over his head. Now there were some there who were angry, and they were saying among themselves, why was the ointment wasted like this? It could have been sold for, for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor, and they rebuked her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you giving her trouble? She's done a beautiful thing for me. For you will always have the poor with you. And whenever you want to, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body for burial before it's time. And I tell you the truth. Wherever in the whole world the gospel is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And Judas is scared. The one of the twelve went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they rejoiced, and they promised to pay him money. And he began to look for how he could betray him at the best time. Now, on that next day, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus' disciples came to him and they said to him, Teacher, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the household, the owner of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Prepare for us there. The disciples went out. They went into the city and they found it just as he had said. And they prepared the pass. And when it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had reclined and were eating, Jesus said to them, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. And they were deeply grieved and began to say to him, one after another, not me. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread with me in the dish. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. And then, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And he said to them, Here, take it. This is my body. And after the meal, he took a cup and, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many.
and I tell you, I swear, never again will I drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And as they were going, Jesus said to them, you will all be offended and run away. For it is written, I'll strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I've been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. <laughs> Peter said to him, uh, yeah, well, maybe all of them will run away, but not me. And Jesus said to him, This night, before the cock, the cock crows two times, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And all said the same thing. They came to Gethsemane, the place of the oil press. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John. And he began to be deeply troubled and disturbed. said to them, my soul, my soul is grief, deeply grief, even to the point of death. Please stay here and, and stay awake. And so he went and he fell on the ground. And he prayed that this hour might pass him by. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. But not what I want. But what you want. He came back and he found them. sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you even stay awake one hour? Wake up and pray that you may not enter into the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is <coughs> weak. And he went away again and prayed saying the same words he came back and again he found them <laughs> sleeping because their eyes were heavy and they didn't know what to say to him he went away again a third time and prayed <coughs> And he came back, and he said, Are you still sleeping? Take a your rest. It is received. The 
the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. Look. My betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, came with a crowd from our chief priests and scribes and elders armed with swords and clubs. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. He said to them, the one I kiss, the man I kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. And he came and he went right up to Jesus and immediately came to him and he said to him, Rabbi, and he kissed him, and they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who was standing by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against an insurrectionist with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple. And you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And forsaking him, they all ran away. There was a young man following him who was clothed only in a linen cloth. And they seized him. But leaving the linen cloth, he ran away naked. They led Jesus to the house of the high priest and all the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, the entire council gathered together. And Peter followed at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the, war with the guards warming himself by light of the fire. Now our chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they couldn't find any because the witnesses all bore false witness and their testimony did not agree. So some of them stood up in the midst and they said, we heard this man say, I will destroy this temple made with hands and in three days I will build up another not made with hands. But even so, their testimony did not agree. And so, the high priest stood up in the midst and said, Well, have you no answer to make to all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent and said, nothing. But the chief priest, the high priest, questioned him a second time. And he said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And at this, the high priest rent his robes. And he said to them, need do we have for further witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. How does it look to you? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And they 
They spit on him. They struck him in the head with a stick. They said to him, Come on, prophesy. And the guards led him away, beating him. Meanwhile, Peter was down below in the courtyard. And one of the women servants of the high priest saw him across the courtyard. She went right up to him. She looked at him and she said, Hey, you, you were with the, yeah, the Nazarene, Jesus, right? And he denied it. He said, oh, I, I neither know nor understand what you mean. He went out into the gateway. But the woman followed him. And she said to the bystanders, he's one of them. Again, he denied it. And the cock crowed. And after a little while, and again, after a little while, the bystanders said to him, why, sure you're one of them. I mean, look, you're a Galilean. He began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man you're talking about. And immediately, the cock crowed for a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows two times, you will three times deny me. And beating himself, he wept. Early in the morning, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders, and the whole Sanhedrin, having had a meeting and developed a plan, bound Jesus, led him away, handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate questioned him. Well, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered and said to him, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. So that Pilate again questioned him. And he said to him, Well, have you no answer to make? You can hear all these things that they're charging you with. But Jesus was silent and said nothing. So that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, he used to release to them any one prisoner whom they asked. And there was a man in prison whose name was Barabbas. Who, had, who was bound with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. And coming up, the crowd of our people began to demand that he observe the custom. But Pilate said to them, well, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Because he had, he knew he recognized that it was out of envy, jealousy, that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests incited a crowd of our people to ask for 
Barabbas instead. And Pilate said to them, What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews? And they shouted, Crucify him! Pilate said, Why? What evil has he done? And they, they shouted vehement. Crucify him! And so Pilate wanting to satisfy the crowd of our people, handed Barabbas over to them. And having flogged Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away into the courtyard of the, of the temple, that is the Praetorium. And they called together the whole battalion, and they put a purple cloak on him. And they plaited a crown of thorns and they put it on his head. And they began to salute him, saying, Ha ha! Hail! King of the Jews! Ha ha! And they spit on him. And they paid mock homage to him. And they struck him in the head with a stick. And when they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and they put his clothes back on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, one Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place of the skull. And with him they crucified two insurrectionists, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by, coming in from the city, wagged their heads. They said, ah, ha, ha, hey, you would tear down the temple and build it up again in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. And the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, he saved others, <laughs> but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we might see and believe. At the sixth hour, there was a deep darkness that descended over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 